Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. Tinkerbell's gown is done. I am so excited. It turned out amazing and I can't wait to show you guys the gown finished on my dress form. I'm not going to show it to you on me until I have the get ready with me videos, but that is coming too. So in this video, I am finishing the gown. Last week I made the bodice. This week I'm adding the skirt and all the trims and closures to the gown. So with that, let's get sewing. The first step to adding the skirt to the anglaise was to cut the skirt panel pieces. I used the same pattern pieces that I had used to make the over petticoat earlier, but I added six inches to the top of each of the pieces because I knew I wanted the anglaise gown um, skirt to be longer than the over petticoat skirt. So I cut two side fronts two side backs and one center back. I did not cut a center front because the anglaise gown closes in the front and that center panel is open to show the petticoats underneath. Once I had the pieces cut out, I did the same hem treatment on these that I did for the over petticoat and that is to just run a zigzag stitch across all of the edges and that finish ends up looking a little bit organic and somewhat like a leafy texture. Once the pieces were all hemmed, I overlapped starting in the center back and I overlapped the pieces by eight inches on each panel so the center back went eight inches onto the side backs and the side backs went eight inches onto the center back and so on and so forth. Once they were all pinned together, I ran a basting stitch across the top of the pieces just to make sure they stayed together really nicely while I pleated the pieces down. Before I pleated the pieces down, I sewed down the length of the pocket slit openings an eighth of an inch away from each edge, and then once I sewed down that line, I cut down the center and then cut little triangles at the end so the pocket slit could be opened up nicely before I put the binding on. I attached the binding by first sewing it a quarter inch away from the pocket slit edge and I had to kind of finagle it a little bit when I got down to the very bottom of the edge but since I had cut those little points into the corners of the seam it worked pretty well. Once I had that sewn then I pressed it around to the wrong side of the petticoat and hand stitched it down using a slip stitch. Using the pocket slit as a landmark, I pinned it to where the side opening should be, and then I measured the length of the bodice from that point backwards to the back point, and from that point forwards to the front point, so I knew what measurement each section needed to be pleated down to. 
and then I used a measuring tape um, taped down to my desk just to kind of mark the pleats where I wanted them and make sure that they were as even as possible when I was done pleating. Once the entire skirt was completely pleated, I basted it across the top just to hold the pleats in place. And once they were held in place, I attached the skirts to the bodice by lining up the outside edge of the bodice, the fashion fabric, to the just below the basting line that I had already made. And after that was done, I top stitched along the bodice edge to hold the skirts in place. Since this is not a historically accurate dress by any means, I decided that it didn't bother me that much to have top stitching visible on this dress. Once the skirts were attached to the fashion fabric, I used a tiny slip stitch and I sewed the lining down so that it covered the raw edges of the skirt pieces. Now it was time for a try on. I was super thrilled once I got this on, um, but I have not quite figured out how to lace my stays down myself. So Todd comes in and does it for me. And he looks like he's really reefing on my stays here, but he's not. It's this ribbon is super slippery. So until I replace it with some proper lacing cord, he has to hold it really tight. So this impromptu try-on session turned into a short little get ready with me. After the stays came my bum roll and then the under petticoat, which really isn't an under petticoat because it's not under the stays. And then this is the over petticoat I made with the leafy looking skirt and then the gown. And it fits great. Once I had it on. Todd helped me get it positioned correctly so I could pin it in place and mark where the closures needed to be. Um, he was not brave enough to pin into my, even though there is a busk in my stays, so he held it together while I pinned and marked. And of course every try-on needs a little spin. Personally, I think the slippers really make this outfit. Um, and here you can see I am marking just about a half an inch away from the line that I've drawn on the front of the bodice. And that is where I'm going to fold the bodice over and put it down, making a boning channel. I used steel boning in these front boning channels and after I pressed the boning channel down, I put the boning in and then pinned up right against it as tight as I could with pins and then using a zipper foot I sewed right along the edge of the boning just to hold it in place and make sure it didn't shift around at all. Um, in that process, I also sewed across the bottom and top edges of the boning to make sure that uh, it was enclosed completely and didn't come out.
after the boning was inserted, I attached hook and eye tape to the front, making sure to match the hook and eyes appropriately on each side. And then I hand stitched the hook and eye tape, the loose side down by hand on the inside of the bodice. And that's what you can see me doing here. I just used a real quick whip stitch to get a few stitches between each eye or hook and then I made sure I went through each eye as well. And there's this thread tangling on me like crazy again just like it did on the petticoat. Once the hook and eyes were all attached, it was time to add the trim. I cut a piece of iridescent fabric about two inches wide using pinking shears, and then I gathered it down to the size of the sleeve. Each sleeve had a strip the width of fabric on it, and I just hand stitched that over top the end of the sleeve where I had top stitched the sleeve flounces in place. To attach these little ruffles, I just was using a large back stitch. iridescent fabric was stitched in place. I also hand stitched some gold ribbon over top of that just to add a little extra oomph. I don't have any footage of me attaching it, but the front edges of the bodice and the neckline also got the iridescent fabric ruffle and the gold ribbon as well. Once the ribbons were completely sewn in place, I added little bows to the point of the elbow pleats on each sleeve. So here it all is put together, first the shift and then the bum roll. I did not put my stays on when I put this together just because my mannequin is close enough to the correct size. Um, after the bum roll goes the ivory petticoat and just like all 18th century petticoats it ties in the front and the back. And then the green over petticoat with the leafy type skirt structure. And now that that's on, the gown gets put on and the front fastened up and Tinkerbell's dress is complete. And here you go. Here is a 360 of my 18th century Tinkerbell dress.
I absolutely love how Tinkerbell's gown came out. It is exactly the vision in my head that I had for this gown, and I'm just really, really excited to get some pictures of it worn and show you guys the whole idea in one. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more content from me, please subscribe. If you would like YouTube to let you know every time I upload, hit the little bell. Thanks for watching.